body. Now, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about the way it looks, the body, and the way it feels, because that's probably why you're in this class. You want to master this body. You want this body to work for you. You do not want to work for this body. You don't want to have to feed it when it's always hungry. You don't want to have to lay down when it's always tired. Okay. What you want is your body to respond to your nature, to your inspiration, to your magic. And probably your whole life, it's been the other way around. Like you have been a slave to your body. Your body's needs, your body's wants, your body's hungers, your body's feelings. You have built an entire reality around what this body wants and needs. And the only reason why it is wanting things that you don't want is because it was programmed in trauma. Okay? And it was programmed in trauma. So its desire is to be safe, not free. You see, you want to be free. Your body wants to be safe. OK, you want to connect with spirit. Your body wants to eat food. You want to manifest millions of dollars. Your body actually doesn't. And the only time that you're dealing with pain is when the spirit of death is present. OK, and that is another symptom that you're going to notice because we have mental warfare of the subconscious mind trying to get you back to the program. OK, you've got that. Then you're going to have the spiritual warfare. The spiritual warfare is when the spirit of death starts to notice that you are not on the clock. Okay. Where is she? She's not giving us this energy. She's not showing up to this party here. She's at home and I can't see what she's doing. All right. So you will encounter some spiritual authority kind of bothering you. And this is where we're going to really see your courage. So if I could show you that right now you're going to go up against two bosses in your video game. Okay. You got to go defeat two bosses. One is your own subconscious programming getting louder to try to suck you back in and the spiritual warfare, the spirit of death, really trying to scare you or hurt you into submission. Now, I will give you the rules, so I don't want you to go like, oh, my God, I'm going to get possessed. No. But there might be parts of your body that are. Okay? Because the thing about free will is, is wherever there is unconsciousness, okay, then that is an entryway for spirit. So the more you have been absent of your body, the more you might have this dark energy in your body. Now, I'm going to give you the symptoms of dark energy that lives in your body, okay? If you have a reoccurring disease or a reoccurring illness, I don't mean a headache here or there or something that's like, like just a few times, at 10 pounds, 20 pounds, no. If you have a obesity situation, like 30 pounds or more, okay? dark energy. Disease, dark energy. Okay. And again, it's taking up space in your residency because you have been absent. This is why I'm back to showing you guys how to be your bodies because you're going to be like, tell all the squatters to get out. You have that authority. The only reason it's there is because you haven't been. All right. And I want you to so, so that you don't get all freaked out here, I want you to look at this dark energy as a parasite, okay? A parasite is very weak in its, in its form. It, it needs to hide from you because it's, it's very, very weak. And it has to procreate a lot because the only safety a parasite has is in its numbers, all right? And that, so that is exactly how the dark energy operates. It's, its safety is in its numbers, and so they have a lot of like gang type of energy. That's why you'll notice that if someone says something about you on social media that's bad, then other people that are uh, that are like that will like befriend that person. Okay? Because that dark energy is attracted to each other because they're stronger. And very by themselves, very very weak because they don't have life force energy. 
See, the thing that you have is what they want. You have the life force energy, you have the imagination, and you have the direct connection to God. They have none of that. They might have dark spirit, and it's intelligent, very, and it's quick, it's fast, it's fluid, but it only gets its life from siphoning off of you, okay? So what it wants you to do is be away from your physical body into your mind, Thinking, 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 worry, 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 contemplating, 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 absent from your body, and then your body is going to be very exhausted. So you're not going to want to do anything. So one of the things they did in Nazi Germany, uh, Germany was they had, they were, they were actually preparing for this time. That's, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the Nazi boot camps were a practice run for what they're going to be doing here. And what they did was they wanted to figure out a way where they didn't have to capture people, okay? How could they get people on their own free will to give up all of their power? So they put fluoride in the water and they noticed that the prisoners were more willing to do what they wanted to do. They were more sedative. So you guys have fluoride in a lot of your stuff, okay? They messed with the gender and the sexuality. They got people very addicted to their sexuality versus connection. They perverted sexuality because this moves you away from connection. Okay. They, um, what else did they do? They also created all kinds of what they call, I think it's called ML, MLK, and it's a mind control. So all this, the stuff that they put in the air is to basically defrag your your um, antennas so that you're not thinking clearly. So if you have brain fog or something like that, okay? And again, this, 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 because basically once they start their new world order, they want people to be like, okay, yes, you can microchip me, right? Yes, here you go. And, and there's a lot of people that will willingly do that because, you know, there's about, I think that... that there's about a billion people that won't do that. Let's just say that. About a billion people that were, are like, nope, I'm not going to do that. The rest of them want to because that's the sheep mentality. And, and so they will live out their prophecy eventually. And they will have their society of robots. But you are not in that category. So the longer that you have to go through what the world is going through is just going to be more detrimental for you. It's going to create more PTSD and more stuff that you have to work through. You're not going to, you're not doing that because the thing that's really awesome about imagination and consciousness is they've poisoned our food, our poisoned our water. They give us this medication. They inject us with all kinds of stuff. You know, they take our freedoms away. They make us feel like we're unworthy with money, even though we're worth billions. They do all this stuff. And yet here you are taking this boot camp. So it's not working. That's the good news. You are not like, what's the point? You know, I give up. You're here on a Sunday in my class. So that tells me that it's not working. Because consciousness can decide that none of that stuff affects them. You can decide fluoride doesn't hurt you. You can decide that that stuff in the sky doesn't bother you. That's the alchemy process. Because the thing about consciousness is whoever has the consciousness rules the environment. And as soon as you are conscious of the game that they're playing, I'm not telling any of the, you guys get scared and worried. I'm saying no. This is how you use your power because they don't even have the power to manifest. They've built all of this off of us agreeing. They get us to look at something and then we imagine it for them. Did you know that? They show us a movie of something they want to create. And then we look at the movie and it makes billions of dollars and then it manifests. So we actually have to look at what they want to create in order for it to create. That's how powerful we are, okay? You also have some very strong Christ blood that gets you out of a lot of 
purgatory. So the rule is, is if you can forgive yourself and forgive others that have hurt you, you don't have to be at all guilt or shame for anything you've ever done. So there's like certain rules of this video game. Okay. It's like all video games have like little niches and little like abstracts to help you like jump certain timelines. Right. And this game is exactly the same way. And this is why for me, the last like probably five years, I've been studying both sides because to me, I, I found out that both sides are using the same manual. We're all using the Bible, even the dark. They know the scripture better than we do. And this is our handbook, right? We create our own reality they get us to create their reality. We have the blood of Christ. They chew on it. Okay. That's what they do. We have it. They eat it. Pretty weird. But that's what they do because they don't have it. And yours renews with your mind. So the clearer your mind gets, the stronger your body's going to get. And I don't want you to be freaked out thinking I have dark entities in me. Everybody does. Just like everybody has parasites. But the more you reclaim that part of your body, the more you get really solid on your what and your why, and the less you think, okay? And the more you start to feel and the more imagination you use to create a new idea, a new world, a new body, a new, you know, a new place for your genius energy to go, the more you disconnect from the matrix, okay? So the mental warfare is just your programs trying to suck you back in. The spiritual warfare is just trying to get your energy, but they have no power. Just like your subconscious mind doesn't actually have as much power as we give it. It's just been doing it for so long and you've been weak. You've been allowing it to run. You've allowed this same program to run thousands of times and so even you are more accustomed to this program than actually taking the time and energy to, to stop it which means not react and not respond you cannot respond and react to a program if you want it to end because again your currency see you think that what is the currency on this planet is money and oil and energy nope it's you. You are the currency. You are the commodity. See, they print the money. We don't need oil. We have free energy. So all of these things are basically designed for us to fight over because they don't need them. They invented money so they could control us because what they want is us. And you think that oh, China is fighting this. It's, it's humans that they want. Because the human is God. It's energy, it's imagination, it's creation, it's blood, it's all of the things that they don't have. So when you think of, oh, I don't have money, so I'm not worth it. Or I don't have this perfect body, so who's going to want me? You are not looking at what you actually have. Yeah, your body might be a little bit right now of damaged goods from being part of a broken system. So what? You can renew your mind and you can renew your body because every single cell in your body renews every 11 months. So even if you didn't do what I'm asking you to do and you just did imagination and none of the action work that's coming, you would have a different body in 11 months because you are thinking and seeing yourself differently. What I want you to see yourself as is the most valuable thing in the universe. Because God made us in his image, which means we are human God. And I don't care what religion that you go to right now, we're all saying the same thing, fine. All right? Maybe some of the more darker religions are not saying this, but spirituality has always said that you're God. Your DNA, new in numerology and mathematics, spells out, I am God. Your own DNA. But... You might have had thousands of years of being a slave as well. Okay. You might be connected to some really dark timelines. You might have some really shitty memories of past lives. And so you're going to have to get very present 
moment by moment by moment by moment and stop getting so distracted with circumstances, which means that there's two, the two most important things that you're going to work on is forgiving others and yourself, forgiving others and yourself, forgiving others and yourself. Because I will tell you, none of this will work for you if you need to hold a grudge. If you need to hold a grudge, this isn't going to work. Because you are not a clear line for creation. You're blocked. And the thing is, is the only, the only energy in the universe that holds a grudge is the energy of death. So whatever part of you won't forgive is not you. And I've met people like, oh, I just can't forgive that. I'm like, that ain't you. That is you being possessed. Because the real you doesn't, once she realizes that everybody's operating out of this slavery and we all do things out of duress and scarcity that we would never really do in life, like, would you really hurt your body if you were in heaven? No. You're only going to hurt your body when you're in hell because that's what everybody does here. Everybody drinks the Kool-Aid here. You know? The way they teach us is that our body is in the way. They want us, especially spiritual people, they want you to think your body is just in the way so you won't be with it. Because when you're not with it, they can be with it. So as you start to take your bodies back and start to spend time in it, and you start to realize how amazing you are and what you actually can create here, If here's the coolest thing. Whatever you could imagine for yourself, God already has waiting for you. Already with your name on it. Now, whatever dark thing you can manifest to as well, that is waiting for you too. Because you have creative free will. So if you spend your time thinking on what could happen, well, that's been created for you as well. And so you really are at a crossroads right now but you have the entire universe supporting you. You've all even moved into this like perfect energy. And this is why I started the boot camp when I did, because I knew we would be like hitting this point right here. And then we would be able to create like synergy around this. Even if people did this in six months, we would be in this time frame creating these classes right here. So it would be the signature of this energy. All right. So regardless of where you are in your spiritual journey, Honestly, if you have been on your spiritual journey for a year or two, you're going to go faster. If you've been on your spiritual journey for 10 years, this is going to take you longer. Because the more work we've done, the more we say, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And that right there is what's called pride. And pride is one of the biggest energies to block you. Okay? Like... So the story was, is that Satan got kicked out of heaven because of his pride. And he was purgatoried to this part of the earth and oh, because he wasn't allowed to play nice with others. Okay. He was here. Like, you get this domain. I'm going to do the rest of this universe over here. Okay. And so those of us who have been through hell, we have a tendency to have a big pride. Because we have been through a lot and either our intelligence or our gift or something has really saved us in our life. And so we hold on to it. And it might be the one thing that you have to let go. Because if Satan got kicked out of heaven for pride and it's the seventh and worst of all deadly sins, it might be the chip on your shoulder that is in the way. Because it was, as I know, when I first started going on my weight loss journey, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, that I lost the weight and I didn't notice it. I still felt big. I still felt fat. I couldn't eat one piece of food and not feel completely obese. Because it was mental illness. It was not physical. 20 pounds and under is stress and anxiety of living life that you don't like. 30 pounds to more is PTSD. It's emotional trauma sitting in your body, okay? And the way that we wanna get this out is by coming clean, literally. 
So if you can come clean about all the things that have hurt you in your life, you can journal them, you can let them go, you can forgive yourself, you can forgive others, then dark spiritual energy cannot live in your human body, by the way. Because the only way that dark energy can live in your body is if you are holding on to the emotion of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, all right, judgment. If you are in judgment of someone, you are a match. If you are unforgiving to someone, you are a match. If you are bitter, you are a match. So this is why I'm saying your self-concept is who you desire to be. And I know who you desire to be is someone who's not walking around with a chip on their shoulder, who is not resenting. Because the thing is, you have to understand, everything you've attracted into your life, you have attracted. So if someone hurt you, you attracted that. Okay? Yes, they might have been there. But it's like, you know, if I'm walking down in the middle of the street, someone's going to bump into me. I put myself there. Okay, so there are certain programs that were forced into you as a child to make you a magnet for PTSD. Because the thing is, is this dark energy knows that you're not going to figure out that you have a subconscious mind until you're like 30. And by the time you're 30, you've manifested the same program like at least 20 times. So now it's a neural pathway that's very deep into your brain. And now you're body craves to do this. Your body wants to do this. It loves to do this. It loves to choose the wrong person or, or always have drama with your social life or always lose something. Your body literally craves it. After you've done it a few times, it becomes normal. This is why they say you would, your body would choose a comfortable hell versus a unknown heaven right here. But here's the thing. I don't want you to think, oh, God, this is just going to be too hard to do my subconscious mind. The reason I'm giving you this backstory is because I want to give you a play. I want to give you motivation. I want to give you something to look forward to versus just like having a little bit of a better body. I want you to look at this big picture as you're that you have freedom and prosperity and unity and all of the things that is in your heart. Like when you imagine your dream life, is anybody fighting? <laughs> like, no. Is anybody got a money issue? No. Is anybody sick? No. Well, that's you imagining it. So you must be imagining who you are in heaven. God said, bring heaven to earth. That's all I want for you. All right. Now, there's a lot of people that have already created this for us. So all we have to do is tap into that. And now we have that hundred monkey effect, which means that when enough consciousness is required, only 8% of consciousness needs to rise to this threshold for all of us to win. 8%. That's not a lot. We can't get distracted. We can't be focused on really shallow crap right now. We want to think the big picture. Because here's the thing, you don't really want a better life in this world. You don't want a better body in this world. Because the second you have something really good, that's when all the attacks come. Have you noticed? So one of the things that has kept you the safest in this world is to turn your volume down. Turn your volume down. You're too shiny. You're too happy. You're too golden. You're too magical. You're too smart. So what do we do? Turn our volume down. Because we seem to be pissing people off just by being authentic. So there's a part of you that's like, I don't want to do this because I know what happens when I've tried this before. And what I want to tell you is that this time is going to be different. Because everything's lined up and because you're going to change it at the root this time, which means that you're not going to lose the weight for a bit. You're not going to lose the symptoms for a couple of weeks. You're going to lose the problem for good because you never actually have a physical problem. You have an emotional disease and the emotional disease is some abuse still sitting in your body, something that you're ashamed of, something you feel guilty for or some things. 
and some people that you haven't been able to let go of, some things you haven't been able to let go of. That is the only free will that they have to use to get in here. That is it. And that's coming from like hardcore possession, like priests. And I've listened to several of them and they all say the same thing. Okay. Because the thing is, is when you do forgiveness work, you also break any curses. If you have generational curses, if you have family curses, okay, that also breaks all of those things. So you don't have to like keep having that because this priest talked about how what he sees like the, with the biggest possessions and stuff. Like, like there's, a, so there's different levels of demonic attacks. Okay. There's illness in the body. There's mental illness. And then there's full body takeover. And those, that seems really scary to us. Those are the movies that we won't watch. But let me tell you what it takes to do a full body possession is a very unconscious person. Very unconscious. Like, I mean, so disconnected. So like someone who's been on meth for like 20 years or someone who's like been an alcoholic for many, many years, that would provide an opening. But it is very difficult to do a full possession, by the way, because you are a child of God. So you have to be very removed from the body in order for that to happen. So you don't have to worry about that happening to you. But the bits and areas of your life that you despise the most are probably where they are. Because they are the vibration of hate. They are a vibration of ugly. They are the vibration of pain. So the places in your body that you dislike the most, that's where they usually are. Because you're feeling them. It's also the areas that won't budge or change. And so you're not going to do a physical thing here. You're going to do the emotional thing. You're going to do your forgiveness work. You're going to do your, your forgiveness work for others and yourself. You're going to confess your shameful things to your creator, okay? And you can either do it in writing or you can just sit in a room I, because it's not that big of a deal. It's you that's judging it. And the you that's judging it is the you that won't let yourself heal because of it, all right? Forgiving others, even the people that hurt your bodies, abused you sexually, forgive them. Because when you do not forgive them, you are the same vibration as them. Energy is energy. That's what they want. They want you mad. They want you angry. They want you bitter. They want you resentful. They want you shamed. Because then they can use your free will because you are the same vibration. Even if you have a loving heart, even if you're super kind, so your job is to get out of your mind, get out of the matrix, into your body, back in a relationship with your creator, through your imagination, let go of that shame and guilt, okay? Confess all your darkest sins to your creator. You're going to feel so much better. And then what you're doing is you're getting, you're, you're, you're buying your body back from the matrix. You're buying your body back. Then when you start doing your affirmations, you're going to notice that it's a lot easier. Because the thing is, is when you do your affirmations and you have a lot of guilt and shame and resentment, then you have an inner voice that tells you that that's not true. I'm going to be rich. No, you're not. Well, you might need to confess some money wounds. You might need to conf confess some bad things you've done with money. So what? We all have. Okay. Or my body won't heal. You've probably abused your body. You need to confess what you've done to your body. I've done some horrible shit to my body, you guys. I've starved it. I've beat it up. I've poked it. I've prodded it. I mean, I've given it away. I mean, every form of abuse that we judge out in the world, I have probably done to myself. So once I confessed all of those things... There was like nothing nobody could use against me. And then I was like, oh, and then it started to heal. That autoimmune disease went away real quick. But see, autoimmune disease represents I hate myself or I dislike myself. And the way I was treating myself, I was horrible. 
So look at where your manifestations are not working. That is the area that you need to confess and forgive and ask for forgiveness from your creator, which of course you always are forgiven, always, instantly. It's just you that's got to forgive it. And then you've got to forgive other people that interacted with you. Then as soon as we get through that step, then I'm going to start teaching you how to do the authority work, which is the alchemy work, which means you're going to start programming your water, programming everything you eat. You're going to start commanding certain things. You're going to start doing the whole Moses and moving the Red Seas because you will be back to factory settings. And once you are back to factory settings before the guilt and shame piled up, before the scarcity program, before you got abused, before you had all the losses. See, before that, you knew you were powerful and you couldn't wait to show everybody what you could do when you were two years old. And that's where we're going to go back to factory settings. And then we're going to start remembering the authority that you have as a child of God, as a creator. Those affirmations are going to work a lot faster. The manifestations are going to start happening. And you are also going to start remembering because one...